Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have eight wines in front of me, seven and a half Chardonnays, because half of them's got some something else in. So uh, anyway, that's wine number three. But anyway, we'll better start on wine number one, because that's the type of guy I am. Uh, how many different countries? We've got quite a few. A lot of South, uh, I think they're all Southern Hemisphere, uh, but let's just dig in and see where we get to. First one, 2012, uh, Vinalba Chardonnay Reserva uh, from, uh, whereabouts in Argentina? Mendoza. Uh, starting with a rather hefty 14.5% alcohol. I've got them in vintage order and then within the vintages uh, by alcohol, but uh, seeing as this is the only 2012 around and uh, it's the youngest by a considerable margin. Well, maybe 14.5%, but it doesn't smell like it's going to be that high. It smells quite perky and fresh. It's got the melon, peach, um, the typical New World chard. Now, I don't, I don't get too uh, too much evidence of soil or, or character coming through, but uh, nice, gentle, slightly nutty. Smells perfectly reasonable. And it tastes pretty fresh too. Uh, melon, peach, uh, macone style. I don't think I don't think there's any oak here. I can't certainly can't uh, taste any smokiness or anything like that. I think that's like the nutty edges more from Lee's aging rather than uh, uh, anything that's uh, that's oak related. Um, pretty decent start. I mean, I don't mind it at all. Yeah, simple, honest, tasty glugger. Next. Six months older, uh, we are in uh, California here for Panamera Chardonnay 2011 and it just says California, it doesn't say uh, any particular uh, region in California. Now this smells a much weightier wine, half a, well, a full degree lower in alcohol, according to the label, uh, but um, yeah, it smells richer, oilier and it has got a bit of oak influence here. There's some. Uh, uh, yeah, smokiness coming through. Uh, it feels like a, a uh, it's not. It's not going to be as refreshing. It's going to be a bit more, a bit more stolid and uh, uh, yeah, maybe a bit more brawny rather than brainy. Ah, it's okay. It's last year's wine for me. That um, there's this uh, oily pineapple chunk character. Um, this, the type of wine that Australia was really making in the mid '90s, and uh, I thought we'd all got a bit fed up with stars like that. I think it's a bit uh, lighter than than. Uh, I think I've tried Panamera Chardonnay before. I've certainly had some of their their reds, uh, but yes, it feels a bit, a bit stolid. Hey, um, wine number three. Now this is the one I was talking about. Seven and a half Chardonnays. This one's Chardonnay Semillon. Not sure how much Semillon is in here, but uh, this is uh, uh, the Casa Silva um, 2011 from the Colchagua Valley in Chile. First off, a few Chilean wines. I think I've got another one from these guys later on, plus another Chilean winery. Now there's a fresh, almost um, Sauvignon-like character coming through here, rather, rather than the Semillon. This uh, uh, perky, citrus, herby freshness. Uh, I get the more that character than may maybe the Chardonnay is giving anything. It's maybe giving a little more rounded, peachy, nutty character. Uh, smells, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of freshness and a bit of fatness. How do they sit together? Let's have a see. Not jumping up and, up and down about it. Uh, it's yes, as I say, it's got the fresh side, um, and um, in terms of depth of flavour, maybe that's what it's lacking. It, it just feels uh, correct, well made, uh, but just a little bit simple and uh, soulless. Okay, I'd, I'd, I'd finish my first glass. Probably look for something else for having if having a second glass. Uh, wine number four. Uh, this is White Rhino 2011 Chardonnay, uh, wine of South Africa, and it says the Rhino of Linton Park, origin Western Cape, weighing in at 12 and a half percent alcohol. Well, if the previous one didn't smell of all that much, this one smells of even less. This. Um, <laughs> There's a, a sulfur dioxide, the winemaker's preservative, I, I noticed that, uh, uh, but the wine underneath really struggling to get out. Maybe there's a slightly buttery note there, but uh, in terms of um, flavours, not hot on those. I mean, as with the previous one, um, I'd, probably, I'd finish a glass, I'd look for something else to have a second uh, glass of. Um, it's clean, it's vaguely crisp, it's... Um, if you said to me that that was a cheap Pinot Grigio, I would have believed you. Let's see whether India can fare better. Fratelli Chardonnay 2011 uh, from uh, the yeah, Fratelli winery, which I think is in Maharashtra. Yep. Um, and, ooh, a brush of lemon chiffon wrapped around a citrus peel core. Can't wait for this. This smells a bit uh, fresher and lemony, and there's almost like a, a little spiciness to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's that, it's that uh, green apple, a bit of the citrus, and um, yeah, there's a there's little note of herb and spice in the background. Uh, I've done some of their, this winery's wines before, and some of them have had a little bit of smoke, some of them have had a lot of smoke in there, but don't get any of that character on this one. 
Well, it's uh, I, I like it's Christmas, and it's got it's got more depth of flavour than the previous two. Again, on the simple side, but has this juicy, sappy edge. Uh, it's certainly more concentrated in flavour. And um, yes, I probably would have a second glass of that. Not hugely complex. Uh, it, it tastes well made, uh, but uh, as uh, I said on a couple of the others, I don't get much of a character of a place. But I do get good wine making, and I get reasonable concentration of the fruit flavours. Again, doesn't feel like that anyone's um, hampered it with oak. And uh, they put on the back this edge of minerality. Don't get so much of that, but there's certainly uh, this herby streak of freshness that's. Uh, uh, keeping you keeping you coming back and uh, having a second, uh, probably a second glass wine, I reckon. Let's see whether wine number six is a second or even a third glass wine. Uh, we're back with Casa Silva, the people who did the Semillon Chardonnay. This is the Angostura Gran Reserva Chardonnay 2011. Uh, let's see, at 14%, woof, uh, Colchagua Valley. But it's carrying its 14% well, it, as with the, the first one, the Vignalba was, was uh, not showing it, its heat at all. Uh, it feels on its, like it's going to be quite uh, elegant, crisp, uh, but um, maybe not hugely complex. Um, but it smells okay. Rounded and ripe, uh, it's got this slight fudge-like character uh, that I think is oak-related. Um, does it say, you know, doesn't say it's got all about the, the estate on the back. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, there, there is, you, you do feel the weight there. It smells crisp, tastes a bit, little bit fatter. Not too fat. Uh, I think I actually prefer the Indian one. Um, this one just feels a little bit more uh, fleshy and rounded. I prefer the, the crispness on the Indian one. So, hey. Let's see whether Chile can do better with wine number seven, which is the Irasaris uh, Contra uh, Aconcagua Costa Wild Ferment Chardonnay. Now, this wine here, uh, the Wild Ferment Chardonnay, it's a style that Irasaris has been doing. Uh, for a while, uh, but um, it used to, the fruit used to come from Casablanca, and uh, in, I, I don't know whether this is the first vintage that comes from their uh, Aconcagua Costa uh, re, uh, re, range on, and vineyards there, I think Aconcagua Costa has just become an appellation in its own right, um, but uh, there's Aconcagua up, up to east towards the Andi, Andes, around where, where Erasmus has their traditional base, uh, around the town of Pankewe. But this is much closer to the coast, so you get these cool breezes cooling it down. It's actually a lower altitude, but because of uh, the sea breezes, it's a, it's a much cooler place. Soaking on from here is, um, is decent enough. Uh, let's see what the Chardonnay is like. 2009 vintage. Smells pretty good, actually. It smells like grown-up wine. Uh, there is the um, there's the well-used oak here, and yes, it is two years older than uh, uh, the ones that have gone before, so it's had a chance to relax. But uh, uh, nicely handled barrel here. Uh, there there is that edge of toastiness that comes from the barrel, uh, but um, there's also this wildness. I mean, I think they I don't know whether it's yeah, it is wild for men. That's the name of the uh, name of the name of the uh, the cuvee. But um, Spent eight months in barrel, and it's got it's picked up some of this slightly nutty um, spent match character that uh, wild yeast in barrel can often give. If you don't, uh, if you just leave the barrels alone, they they sometimes get this um, uh, yeah this, this ever benevolent sulphur. Sometimes uh, that's an, another thing I call call it, uh, and I get that character here. It smells like it's going to be good, and tastes good too. Rounded, rich, juicy, uh, but then when you think it's just going that little bit too fat. Um, uh, the, and the, 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 there's a peach and nectarine, but then it's reined in by nice citrus and uh, apple acidity. Uh, this nutty, sulfury edge weaving its way through. Uh, maybe not hot on the minerality, maybe, I don't know, maybe the, there's, um, it, it, it tastes a lot of nice fruit and wine making, not so much of the soil, but it is it, it is a favourite but so far by uh, uh, quite a long margin. And uh, I don't know how old the vineyards are here, uh, probably not all that old. I mean, we, we may be talking uh, vineyards planted uh, mid-2000s, so uh, uh, very young fruit. And it may be that as the, uh, as the vines age, you get more of the character of the vineyard rather than just the grape variety and good winemaking. But that's good. Final wine. Uh, BMW, uh, not the car maker, uh, but uh, some famous names on here. Botham Merrill, Merrill Willis. Uh, both and Willis, the cricketers, Jeff Merrill, the McLaren Vale winemaker, and uh, ex Hardys, and uh, this is a 2008 McLaren Vale Chardonnay. I mean, it, it's uh, people see celebrity wines and uh, uh, think, oh yeah, it's someone who just like goes along 
uh, and uh, uh, st sticks their name on when they're popular and when they've disappeared out of popularity then uh, the wine disappears too. But they, I think, they, I don't know how many vintages of this they've done. It's probably, um, I don't know if it's 20, it might be, it's certainly uh, been going for a uh, considerable time and uh, it's, not, it's not just a fly-by-night wine. Well, it's quite a full fat wine, but when I think of, of the three characters involved, they're all slightly larger than life. What's been happening with Australian Chardonnay in recent years has been uh, a, a general leanening, is that a word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a, a, a getting slimmer in style. Uh, but McLaren Vale, where the fruit is from for, for this one, it's, not, it's, it's a warm region. It's never going to give you a slender, sleek, skinny Chardonnay, as some people call, call it. And so you do get this rounded, rich, full peachy uh, weight. It's not over-the-top pineapple peach cocktail syrup, but it's nearly getting towards there. It smell, it's a style of wine that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned with one of the early ones, it's a style that maybe is slightly yesterday's wine. And it's okay. I mean, it's, it's okay and it's uh, oaky. Um, there's a, uh, the sweetness of fruit. It's simple. Um, it's uh, as I say. It, it feels to me like yesterday's wine. There's no uh, none of those the, the, that lovely sappiness and juiciness that keeps your uh, mouth enlivened that uh, that you get in in the best modern Australian Chardonnays. Um, certainly, a second glass wine for me. Uh, not a third glass one. I think the nearest we've got to a third glass wine was uh, uh, the Erasmus, and I'm talking about very small glasses, of course. I hope you understand. Uh, but um, uh, an interesting set uh, and. Um, yeah, I think the Erasmus is the one I'm going to have a glass of tonight. See you later.